Hey guys, I am Big and Scary. I'm bringing you another StarCraft II replay, this time featuring Co Fix in our top left corner playing our Red Terran. And in the bottom right, we have Barcode, our beloved blue Protoss. We're on Ohana. Both players are in Masters, and that's everything you need to know about this matchup. Uh, I've had a hell of a week. I live on the east coast of the uh, good old US of A, and I lost power for a couple of days. I lost internet for several more than that. And uh, because of that, this cast is very much belated, and I apologize profusely to the individual who uh, submitted this to cast it. Uh, that's that's basically why it took so long for me to throw this up, and I'm in, I've been looking forward to it for a very long time, very long time indeed, and uh, it just as much. Uh, anticipation as this SCV as he throws down the supply depot he was created from this command center and I mean he was he was thinking about this supply depot all night long and uh, that's basically what I was thinking about this cast all night long no gas for Kofix he's not thinking about gas just yet he's thinking about a barracks gonna be thrown down right next to that supply depot and then probably another one right next to the uh, to the barracks just to complete that wall off hold off any scouting we can see the barcode sending out one probe right now and and I say barcode because that's kind of derogative I obviously his name is I L L I I L L L I I I L L and uh, you guys know that but I'm gonna go with barcode because it just kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit easier than than what I just said and don't ask me to repeat it because I could never repeat it again uh, he's getting his assimilator he's getting his gateway he's gonna get a cybernetics core in just a couple seconds there's no surprises here uh, only real surprise is that he's not going for any sort of uh, early expansion he's also not throwing down any pylon from that first probe trying to sneak it in gets gonna he's gonna get in right before that wall off is actually completed the barracks is gonna finish just a couple of seconds too late for the SCV from that to complete the wall off with a uh, supply depot but the probe gets in he's going to scout out that that refinery has been uh, completed and mi gas mining has been underway for both players at approximately the same level so we're going to expect a similar tech build out of both of them there goes the supply depot there goes the first marine some nice stutter set micro coming out of Kofix. he's going to Oh, just barely not pick off that probe. I could have sworn that that probe was absolutely done for uh, but instead it's going to return home no problem at all going to get back to mining the second geyser has gone untapped and the cybernetics core has been built the SCV from Kofix has arrived he's gonna scout out the gas timing sees that it's just one very traditional build coming out of barcode right now no super early tech no super early cheese uh, no super early aggression so Kofix can sit back relax and follow along the build that he's uh, progressing on which appears to be Marauder coming out of the tech lab barracks as well as a factory being supplied off of two gas now Probably going to be a 1-1-1 one, one, one build, but expect to see this uh, starport be built shortly after that factory. Maybe a reactor thrown on that factory to get out some Hellions, or maybe just a bunch of medevacs. Only time will tell. At the other side of thing, Barcode is going to position his probe in preparation for an expansion of some sort. He still hasn't tapped that second gas, which is what you would expect from Protoss. Uh, the extra minerals from the lack of gas is going to be poured into that Nexus, which is just now thrown down. Uh, we're going to see a heavy economic swell for Barcode in the coming minutes. I mean, look at that. He's continually chrono-boosting out probes. He's six harvesters up over uh, Kofix, who's definitely got the onus now. I mean, he's going to have to push out, do some pressure, and these Marauders are going to help quite a bit from that. I'm always impressed whenever you actually look at the numbers, 125 hit points to the, uh, to the 160 from the Stalkers. They're very very sturdy and they do quite a lot of damage so they're very intimidating as far as units go and they're gonna push barcode all the way back to his base and he's gonna have to scramble a little bit to get out the units needed to protect this nexus I mean there's no even not even a semblance of a wall off here and Ohana has kind of a pseudo pseudo choke here I mean it's it's a bit narrow for a, a ramp but even one or two uh, force fields have a hard time force fielding off that entire ramp you need a couple of structures there and Barco doesn't have any because he played a little bit more passive speaking of passive he's got two more gateways coming out so uh, even though warp gate tech has been finished uh, he's gonna be a little bit delayed on getting out the units he needs to four marauders are down on the field it doesn't look like Kofix is preparing for any sort of major push but with the medevac coming out maybe we'll see a drop play only time will tell Two gas uh, continually mining. We can see that that gas is actually stockpiling a little bit as the command center has been created down on the low ground. Going to be pushing out, trying to shore up a bit of that economic uh, deficit that he's he's been picking up right now. I mean, he's basically 
running a bit of a deficit. I mean, 32 over 24. He's definitely behind on the mineral income, and we can see that Barcodes is just going to surge ahead as he saturates that that main on the other side of thing. He's picked up four Marauders in this medevac. He's going to be pushing down to the north side of the main base from Barco, dropping off his Marauders well into the darkness. Only two of them exposed, finally pushing in. No stem created just yet, but the concussion shells doing quite a lot of damage to any of the zealots stupid enough to get within range. Some nice force fields from uh, Barco, but all that does is forces Kofix to pick them up in the medevac, pushing back just to the north side, really kiting them very, very well. And again, that resilience, we can see that uh, one of the Marauders is very, very weak right now, but some nice, nice micro from Kofix. He didn't lose a single unit on that, keeping his Marauder on the low ground and just continually kited backwards, overall costing over 300 minerals from Barcode and making Barcode feel very, very shy about this entire expansion. I mean, he's got to be worried about the saturation of those probes on the low ground. Uh, when he exposes them to these Marauders, they can do quite a lot of damage. Uh, this is the type of engagement that he needs. It's just a slugging match, allowing his Zealots to get in there and start doing damage. Uh, a nice force field there, kind of choking them up in a corner, but in reality, that just prevents the Zealots from getting the surround that they need. Uh, a warp-in of the Stalkers, exposing one of them to a fantastic barrage of concussion shells from the Marauders. Unfortunately, two of them do go down, and the other two are a little bit weakened by this. All of a sudden, the uh, attrition is beginning to stack up on these Marauders. They're not being as cost-effective as they were in the first engagement. 600 over 1,000 minerals lost. Barcode beginning to uh, catch up with that, and his army is beginning to look even more intimidating still. A lot of zealots in that. They're very slow moving. Uh, he's also pouring quite a lot of money into his infrastructure, getting that plus one, plus one build, as well as the uh, Twilight Council, so maybe he'll get charges so that he can engage those marauders even faster with those uh, charge lots later on. On the other side of things, Kofix has gotten up his expansion. He's caught up with the uh, mineral income at least, and getting that third gas geyser. However, on the other side of things, Barcode is grading his own third expansion, and the rocks have gone down. Some nice uh, use of those zealots in the intervening period between aggression coming out of Kofix. He's also grabbed that thir third geyser. No fourth geyser just yet. The uh, robotics facility is done, as well as the support facility going to be uh, producing some Colossus, I'm sure, as well as, uh, you know, just the higher tech. You want to progress upon uh, along that uh, tech path as time goes on. Uh, Barcode's really performing pretty well to the added aggression coming out of Kofix. I mean, a lot of people would be shy about this uh, sort of harassment from Kofix. Those the Marauders did quite a lot of damage. They didn't do any damage to the infrastructure. They didn't do any damage to the economy. Uh, but they did do quite a lot of damage to the ground supporting forces, and we can see that. I mean, there's just a lot of zealots there. Normally, you'd expect to see more range units like stalkers and uh, sentries. Instead, that's just a lot of mineral heavy units because that's the panic uh, button that you spam. And uh, that's kind of forced Barcode into an awkward situation. He's got a lot of zealots, so what is he going to do? He's going to build a bunch of colossus, get get a bunch of upgrades for those zealots so that they can be more cost effective as the, uh, as the battle progresses. Uh, Kofix, though, has switched from an aggressive stance to a more defensive stance. He's taken down these rocks to pick his own third. The command center is almost done, and the uh, saturation is natural, is top drawer. He's still a little bit behind on the harvester count, but that's because Barcode has taken his own third and also grabbed the two gas there, as well as the fourth gas down at his main. So he's going to have quite a lot of gas, and what is he going to spend that gas on? I'm not 100% sure. He needs another... Uh, something else to spend it on. I mean, yeah, he's got the plus two, plus two underway, plus one's already done, charge is done, the first Colossus is going to be popping out, uh, and he's going to have to blow a bunch of money into surviving this small push from Kofix. I mean, his standing army is probably intimidating enough to deal with this, but as only as long as it can engage directly. I mean, these four medevacs are going to be pretty pretty sly in the sort of engagement that Kofix allows them to get knocked down and this is excellent for this Colossus it's going to be raining down fire picking off one or two of those Marines definitely cost effective for barcode especially in the fact that you don't want to let these get into the mineral line and start doing damage there but barcode is spread thin and he's got three different bases to protect uh, and how he's going to protect them is throwing a bunch of minerals into zealots allowing them to just engage and die very quickly to allow the main force to reposition the other side of things uh kofix has scouted scouted that colossus is done so he's got two vikings being produced from the starport to get that anti-air out he's got the uh, reactor on it probably created no just straight from the starport i guess that's the initial uh, building position of that factory so sometimes you see that factory taking kind of a secondary uh, add-on building role 
that's so glorious seeing all those charge lots going to town on that destructible debris barcode playing very greedy taking that fourth uh, allowing his economy just get up to pretty much unstoppable levels. I mean, 70 harvester counts, pretty much the max that you see Protoss at. Sometimes you see it up to 80 or 90, but uh, it's pretty rare. Maybe we'll see that. Maybe we will. But the Twilight uh, Temple archives underway, just finishing, and Storm immediately spanned. We can see the heavy bio build that Kofix is going for. It's going to be very vulnerable to that uh, Storm. We could also see the plus three, plus three. Uh, being built for Protoss and the plus two just now getting underway for uh, Kofix. So he's going to be a little bit behind on tech, but he's definitely ahead as far as unit composition. I mean, this is a very intimidating force to deal with. He's got the counters for pretty much everything that Kofix is currently fielding. But as time goes on, as these Templars learn how to storm and they accumulate energy and the Dark Templars get out on this field, we're going to see a, uh, a kind of a swing towards Barcode. He's going to be in a much better position. He's been playing for the end game this entire game. He's been going for a heavy land grab, a heavy economy build, and uh, that's going to be, we're going to see that pay dividends as this game progresses. Blink is now underway also. We can see ghosts are going to be out on the field. Where is that ghost academy? Is it back at home? It is back at home. No nuke out of that just yet, but EMP is going to be on the field with those uh, ghosts, and they're going to be incredibly cost effective, especially if this DT shrine is used to mass produce archons that are a little bit more mineral heavy, uh, which is evidently what Barcode is favoring. I mean, he's, wow, 88 harvesters. That is just a huge economy. He's going to be very close to max just yet. Actually, both players are getting getting there. Uh, still a little bit ways to go, and Kofix is spending quite a lot of money on getting the infrastructure up so that he can uh, actually afford to re-macro his army very, very quickly. Sacrificing a single Marine in there to scout out that fourth, which is, uh, the saturation on that fourth is pretty good, can considering that every base is still currently a hundred percent being mined. I mean, there's no mineral patches missing from the main just yet. Uh, I think we'll be seeing some harvesters missing from the main shortly as this drop goes underway and then don't miss on the mini map. We can see that Kofix is positioning his main army just north of the fourth. Uh, so we'll see a double whammy and it's going to arrive at just the right time. The uh, gateway is being created just finishing uh, as the same time the dark shrine has finished. Oh, so many upgrades, so much money represented there that could have been spent in the form of uh, different units besides those zealots. At the same time, Kofix is pushing in with his e enormous main army. Not really enormous. It's, that's an exaggeration. But it's, uh, it's a main army, and it's going to be pushing into that fourth, sniping that nexus down almost instantaneously, and forcing the majority of Barcode's army to be pushing into that fourth. At the same time, Barcode has repositioned with quite a lot of uh, stalkers, managing to pick off one of those medevacs, uh, the other one escaping with only half a load. So overall, kind of a wash for that drop. It did manage to snipe out the Dark Shrine, which is one of the longest constructed buildings ever. I mean, 100 uh, seconds for that building, which definitely delays that sort of harassment. And we can see that the uh, infrastructure is already in place to protect against those cloaked units. We can see a single missile turret down at the third, but none in the main. So actually, those DTs could be pretty useful in sniping out uh, SCVs, but more likely we're going to see them uh, constructing Archons that are just a little bit more mineral heavy. Quite a lot of Vikings out on the field. Unfortunately, we don't see... Oh, wow, that is a lot of Colossus. Where are those Colossus? They weren't in the main engagement. Oh, we can see one. Hmm. Where is the main force <laughs> for Barco? That's just a lot of DTs. Here's those Colossus. Uh... This is this is the state of mind of Barcode right now. I mean, he's got a main force here. He's got a bit of a spattering here and a spattering here. It's just a, basically a huge lane of high Templars that he's hoping that he's going to get a lucky feedback on a medevac that's filled with units and get a nice snipe out on that, and that's a fantastic play. But it's because Barcode's feeling so cramped. He's having a hard time dealing with all this aggression coming out of Kofix, and this is something we haven't seen from Kofix just yet, which is a major aggression with a major force. Uh, and this is going to be something that uh, Barcode's going to have a hard time repelling because his force is so spread thin. And here we see him coagulating his entire force into the center field. And this is something that Ohana does, which is allow you plenty of room to make your death ball. But you got to be careful because there's so many different avenues for attack. Though Zelnaga Watchtower can see that your force is exposed and can push in. And it can give your ghosts plenty of time to drop those EMPs. And that is just a quite a lot of ghosts. So uh, overall, Terran's going to have to be a little bit careful. 
Uh, and this is Kofix just freeing up some supplies, sacrificing his SCVs into the fray. Maybe they'll get lucky and get a uh, snipe on the High Templar. Maybe not. Uh, but overall, I think Barcode is just a little bit on the back of uh, feeling cramped. Uh, he's definitely ahead as far as economy is concerned. I mean, 2,000 over 1,200. Uh, mining off of so many different bases. The main is completely mined out for Kofix, and he's going to have to do something pretty quickly. I mean, he's taking his fourth, but he's having a hard time taking it with the DT there. Uh, even though it's scouted by that missile turret, they do get sniped down by those marauders. And I mean, look on this mini map. He's got so many different clusters of units in so many different areas. Um, and he's definitely being cost effective with his buildings, uh, spreading them out to kind of delay the inevitable push coming from Kofix and allowing that engagement to happen on his own terms. Um, but really, it's going to come down to positioning and can Kofix engage a small cluster of units from Barcode, snipe them off, and then engage the entire force. Here, some nice storms coming out of uh, Barcode, but Kofix is dodging the majority uh, of his units, the, not only taking minor damage from the storms left and right, but it forces a secondary stem pushing in. The majority of the Colossus have gone down from the Vikings, but only a handful, only a single Viking remains, but that's okay. Their job is done. Those five Colossus goes down to a single one. Unfortunately, Kofix has to retreat with uh, so many Archons on the field, forced to pull back completely 160 over 100 supply. That went pretty heavily into Barcode's favor. I mean, look at those resources lost. Over 4,000 resources in Barcode's favor, and he's still at almost maxed completely. Over only 112 from Kofix. He is producing quite a lot of units. He definitely spent a lot of money on that infrastructure, but his economy is behind, and he's running out of money. I mean, only 100 over 700. Things are looking pretty grim, especially with so many Archons on the way. I mean, those were all, I guess, High Templars. Could have been DTs. I don't know. Uh, but that with that many that number of Archons, they're not going to have an issue with dealing with this planetary fortress as well as the uh, taking the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th in the uh, top left corner for Barcode. He's feeling pretty confident right now uh, and he needs to keep that economy in top drawer. I mean, 88 Harvesters, that's a lot of supply uh, and I'd be interested to actually see how much supply is an army, how much supply is an army for Barco, but he's 200 over 200. I mean, he's Definitely in the lead, and he's going to be feeling confident. I mean, 3-3-3. Three, three, and three. <laughs> He's so confident. He's throwing down two Nexus. Uh, that's that's adorable. <laughs> Kofix. Oh, no. At the same time, using the Nexus as a uh, distraction, <laughs> Barcode is pushing up into the fourth of Kofix, pushing and just doing just a bit of damage before pulling back. That's... Uh, I don't know why he pulled back. I mean, he's got such an intimidating army. Look at those Archons. And he's just given Kofix more time to get up the Ghosts, get up those EMPs that are going to absolutely ravage those Archons. Uh, and you really can't afford to give Kofix uh, that much time, especially with the number of Vikings that are getting out of the field. They're going to be dealing quite a lot of damage to the artillery that's going to be supporting Barcode's forces. Um, yeah, so Barcode, even though he's got 100 over 100 and he's got two Nexus, Three Nexus, four Nexus, five Nexus, uh, queued up to be constructed in the uh, in the base of Kofix. Kofix is approaching max out supply, but remember that if this engagement goes the way of the previous engagement, uh, you can just look at the economics. I mean, 2,000 over 300 minerals. Barco's going to be able to remacro so incredibly quickly that he can just zerg into the Terran force and uh, absolutely decimate them. Here goes a massive force flipping on. Just to watch the uh, EMPs go down from those from those ghosts, that just ravaging the Archons. However, there's so many Archons. Uh, even though Kofix does come out on top of this, uh, I think Barco is going to be able to remacro very quickly. There goes all the stalkers, a huge swell of stalkers eating up quite a lot of that sea uh, uh, of the minerals. Not a lot of that supply though. All of a sudden, Kofix is over 180, over 150 for uh, Barco. And he's going to be pushing down into the right to kind of take out one of the mining bases of uh, Barcode. So, got to be careful. He can't afford to lose too many of these bases as well as the saturation there. He needs that economy. He needs to uh, re-macro very quickly. Seven Archons on the way. Uh, if he's lucky, he'll be able to push up into the top right corner and kind of block off Bar uh, Kofix's retreat. Uh, allowing him to push in and actually ravage this marine force and uh, maybe... Maybe this is the advantage that Barco's been waiting for. Unfortunately, those ghosts are just doing a fantastic number on all those Archons, absolutely melting them away. Man, those... And there's no ghosts left. How many ghosts are left? Fifteen. Where are they? 
They're not in this force. Uh, they're doing quite a lot of damage back at home, pushing uh, uh, into that fourth. All of a sudden, the Marines and the Marauders are left to fend for themselves against those Colossus. Those Colossus doing massive amounts of damage, but the Vikings have arrived. Going to be picking off those Colossus. 119 over 170 supply. All of a sudden, it's Barco the, who doesn't have the money. Kofix has just a massive amount of money. He's going to be dropping his orbital on the expansion of Barcode, scouting that. So even though Barcode has a superior economy right now, Kofix has the superior army, and he's going to be eating up that economy like no one else's business, pushing down into the bottom left, taking out one of the uh, few remaining bases. Barcode does have his third up, as well as the fourth, but the... Uh, the fourth is under heavy fire from Kofix, so 130 over 170 supply from Kofix, and those Vikings are absolutely chewing up all of the Colossus, which are the main damage dealing ones, and the units are being destroyed. <laughs> what is H in? It's got to be good game. I mean, he's just so frustrated. He's hitting H instead of G. Look down at your keyboard. I know I just did. It's, it's right next to it. He's a good guy. No, no. I take this game very seriously, and I can assure you this was a fantastic game. This this kind of discredits your argument, Barcode, but uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a great deal. Kofix for posting this and you guys for watching this. Um, I'm very thankful to be back, what with all the internet and the electricity, but uh, I miss this for cereal. If you guys have a game you want me to cast, you could PM me here or on Reddit one way or another. I will see you guys later. I'm Megan Scary. Bye.